So that's what I say. Did you know that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell? Ow, I really need to install the ceiling. Oh, neat. A gateway drug to the dark arts. Well, I've been looking for a new project to keep my thumbs busy, because if it isn't this, then it'll probably be something illegal. So let's ask the age-old question. Can I mod Sonic games onto my leapfrog? The answer is yes, but like with a little asterisk. Let's preface this by setting some expectations, because this hunk of plastic was not made to play Sonic Pinball Party. Instead, it was made to play My Little Pony. So don't expect the world from this device, because the second it runs Sonic 06, we're doomed. For this project, we needed a couple of things, including Retro Leap, SSH Flash Win, the Data Logic USB LAN driver, and finally, WinSC CP. Their uses will become clear in just a moment. Oh, and as for the hardware side of things, you'll need a mini USB, you'll need a laptop or a computer running Windows 10. Uh, I'm running Windows 11, but throughout this entire modding process, I used my mum's laptop, which is running Windows 10. And you'll also need, like, the Leapster itself. Oh, hi. And for any additional information, this channel is a godsend, so go check it out for anything else. So, how did I get this piece of inevitable pollution? to run- OH DEAR GOD! Let's find out, but if you do not care about this section and you just want to find out the game that I was able to get running onto it, then you can skip to the next chapter, I won't be offended. After installing all of the software from the GitHub links, which will be down in the description below, I copied over the LS2000 files from the RetroLeap folder and put them into the SSH flash win file. Next, you'll want to open up a command prompt as administrator and then type in C and then copy and paste the directory of inside the SSH flash win folder. This will allow you to run the SSH flash win batch file. From here, you'll want to plug in the Leapster using the mini USB, and then boot the system into recovery mode. The instructions should be on screen here. From here, you'll just want to follow the on-screen instructions until you get Surgeon running on the device. Now from here, you are going to get a boatload of errors, but don't fret, like puberty, this is completely normal. This is because the generic Windows 10 drivers are really weird and sets up the Ethernet connection in an incorrect way, which is why we will need the Datalogic USB LAN driver. Simply go into device settings until you find the network adapter section. From here, you should find a new connection installed called Generic USB EEM Adapter. Click on it and then replace those drivers with the Datalogic ones that we installed earlier. I promise we're almost there. After that, go into your Ethernet settings and change the Datalogic driver's IP address. The IP address that you're going to want to use is 169.254.8.15. We use this IP address because it's the IP address that is set for the leapfrog. And finally, go back into your command prompt and rerun the SSH flash win batch file. Congratulations, you have modded a children's toy from 2014. What the hell am I doing with my life? But uh, here's the thing, we still need some games for this bad boy, but what, what, what? Hi, we are the Seth Twins, and this video is sponsored by... Us. Do you want access to all Seth Whiter videos, behind the scenes, and even editing tips and tricks? Well, for £2 a month, you can! This is perfect! All proceedings will go towards the funding for videos like this! The link is in the description! God, I hate it when that happens. Anyway, as I was saying, we are going to need some games for this bad boy. So, boot up yeah. WinSCP and then change the file protocol to SCP. Obviously. Under host name, you'll want to label it 169.254.6.1. This is because now that RetroArch is installed and the system is flashed, that's the new IP address. Also, just as before, you'll want to go back into your Ethernet settings and change the IP address for the Datalogic driver once more. Now go back into WinSCP and then under username, you'll want to label it root, and then you can leave the password section blank. And then finally, Click on the advanced icon and then go over to authentication. And now all you have to do is grab the authentication keys from the SSH flash win folder and you are golden. And then all you should have to do is click login and then you are free to send over any cores or ROMs from your local drive over to Retroarch. Me, that was a lot, but hey chapter skippers. Let's take a gander at what's playable on this device. 
yeah, it's not much. Using some additional cores, we are comfortably able to emulate the GBA and the Sega Mega Drive. This means that Sonic 1, 2, 3, Knuckles, and heck, even 3D Blast, they're all playable here. As far as I'm aware, 32X oh, no. and CD add-ons are not available here, so sorry Chaotix and CD fans. They're not here, are they? There's also a Master System core available here, so you can play all the Sonic games from that console. So, have fun playing Sonic Blast, I guess? But where this project shines is its Game Boy Advance performance. Not only does this specific console look the part, but it also plays the part. Sonic Advance 1, 2, 3, and Sonic Battle, and even Sonic Pinball Party, they're all playable oh. here with very little problem. I guess the only problem that you could have with this device is the resolution of the screen is a little bit iffy, so... Yeah. But that's easily overlookable. Overlookable? And it shouldn't detract from your experience. And as far as I'm aware, I'm pretty sure that's every single Sonic game that I was able to get running on the device. But outside of Sonic games, I mean, there's a ton more available here, so let's just quickly go over them. NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and heck, even the PS1, they're all available here. And they all run great, I mean, minus the PlayStation 1, but what were you expecting? I mean, I would much rather tape a lawnmower to my ear than try and boot up Crash Tag Team Racing on... But all in all, is this LeapFrog a replacement for the Switch, or even the Steam Deck? No. But if you do have a free afternoon, it is a load of fun to just tinker around with. So I guess if you look at it that way, yeah, I could recommend it. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've learned something and heck, you might even be able to try this for yourself. And if that's the case and you figured out something that I haven't, comment down below. But that's it from me. I'd like to thank my only coffee supporter at the moment, Radical Traffic Code for allowing more videos just like this one to happen. If you'd like to see the shitload of Sonic games that I'm able to get running on Android, you can click over here. But apart from that, I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye for now.